Today on Pots and Trials, I'm going to show you how to take dahlia cuttings, and that's brought to you with the support of Mr. Fothergill's Cobra Garden and Darlac. Hello and welcome to Pots and Trials. Well, here we are, end of the first week in April, and here in North Yorkshire, it's cold, wet and windy. So certainly not a gardening day. And even Molly took one look out the window this morning and thought, no, I'm going to curl up on my favourite chair. So I've come inside into our conservatory potting shed where I do all my seed sowing and pricking out. Uh, and I'm going to look at the dahlias. And we potted some dahlia tubers, oh, several weeks ago. Bought them from a garden centre. They were totally dormant and potted them into pots like this and a bit of fresh compost just to give them a bit of a boost and get them growing. And as you can see, they've made some really strong plants. This is a dwarf variety called Braveheart. This is going to be grown in a pot. Only grows to about 10 inches tall, 25 centimetres. Um, now, you could keep this growing and keep it until it's time to plant it out when the danger of frost has gone, which for us is usually we'd be thinking third, fourth week in May. And by then, I think this would get too leggy. And it's made some really strong shoots. If we look down there, we can see the, the stalk of the old tuber just there. And then we've got these nice strong shoots that have come just from below the surface of the compost. It's made about half a dozen shoots. So what I can do with that is to take a few cuttings. So instead of having one Braveheart to plant in a pot, I can have three or four or as many as I want. So to take a cutting is very simple. You need a sharp knife. I'm using this one. This is a really good one. It's got two blades on it. One is ideal for doing light pruning or bigger cuttings. And this one is the one I prefer for this type of cutting. But it, whatever it is, it could be a pair of scissors, it could be a little scalpel that you use for crafting. It needs to be sharp. And what I'm going to do with this one here is just very carefully part the leaves so I can get in. And I'm going to try and cut this off as low down to see if I can get a little bit of the tuber below there. And that, that's come away and we can see that's what we call a basal cutting. It's, it's actually sliced off just above the tuber, but it's more or less from where it grew from the tuber. And what I need to do with that then is to just trim that below a leaf joint. Now I cut onto my thumb. If you don't feel very confident doing it that way, put it down on a wooden surface and cut downwards. And then I'm going to remove some of the lower leaves like that. We don't want all of these. And you can do these cuttings from any size, from sort of two inches to three to four inches maximum. So that is plenty long enough for a cutting. We wouldn't want it to be any longer than that one. Um, if, the long, if the cuttings are longer, then I would shorten it to another node there. So we could take it also as a, a nodal cutting as well. So what I'm going to do is take just a couple of those off this plant here so that I can get some extra cuttings go in. So that one's come away again. We can see right from where it was on the root, but I'm going to shorten it. So I'm cutting it below the joint and then take off these lower leaves. We don't want any leaves to be in the compost. They're just going to rot. So the aim is with any cutting is to minimize the amount of foliage. So we've just got a couple of leaves at the top and that way it won't wilt. And um, I could take more off there um, in fact, I might just take one more, then we're going to have three to put in the pot. So I'm just going in, pushing it down, and that one's come away there. That has actually got a little bit of the root on there, which is perfect. So again, we're just going to take off a couple of these leaves. And I think that is fine. So I've got my three cuttings there. One, two, three. Um, and we're going to actually shorten that one. I just feel it is a little bit long. Because smaller cuttings tend to root better than big ones. They don't wilt. Now, I'm going to root mine in a pot, three in a pot. But of course, you could root them individually into these fibre pots if you wanted, one cutting per pot. But for what I want to do, this is the method I'm using. So it's a case of a plastic pot or clay pot, whatever you've got. This is a, a peat-free compost, quite a fine one that I've got here. Um, and I'm just going to fill my pot with compost, give it a shake and level it off. So it just settles it a little bit. And then I can get my dibber and I'm just going to take my three cuttings and make a hole. We don't push them into the compost. We don't want to damage this. We've made a really clean cut below that leaf joint, so we don't want to damage it. And I'm going to push it so about an inch is down 
into the compost and just lightly firm it one there one just here and lightly firm it and the third one is there and again we can lightly firm that in so three strong healthy cuttings around the pot and of course what we must do is label it i've already written the label there brave heart we don't want to get them mixed up especially if we're going several types so what we need to do now is water it you could do it on a cool shady window so i'm going to do them in the propagator so i'm just putting them in this small propagator and then i can just give them a, a little bit of water just to moisten that compost so that the base of the cutting is always moist and that's going to drain down and then that will have a cover on it. So this is a little electric propagator that only uses a few watts and that will pop onto there and that will create some condensation and help them root. And what I can do every day or so is just take it off, give them a mist, just to dampen that foliage and that helps with the rooting process. It stops them wilting. So I would expect those to root in, in about 10 days to a fortnight and then they'll start to make some growth. And when they've made a good root system, we can pot them on individually into about a four inch pot and grow them on. And then we'll have those plants ready to go out in about six, seven weeks time into the garden. Now, if you've done some and you think they're getting a little bit tall, don't worry. Um, this is one, a tall growing variety. Um, this one is night butterfly. I think it gets to, to 40 inches tall, so you know, over a metre in height. Um, and because the light in here isn't as good as a greenhouse, they are getting a little bit tall. So what I'm going to do with this, these, let me just put that out of the way, and another one here, creme de cassis, which again is, is too big for the time of the year. I'm going to actually cut them down a little bit, um, down to here, just take the tops off. Um, and pinch them at the tips out almost. And what that will do will then encourage new growth from these buds just here. So that will make a, a bushier plant. I could potentially get a cutting out of that, but if I show you around the back here, we can see the top of the tuber. I left them slightly proud and we can see lots of little buds just starting to grow. So they will grow and I'll probably take a few of those off as cuttings in a, in a couple of weeks time. So. I want to keep the plants bushy and compact, encourage more shoots that I can take for cuttings. And that way, hopefully, we'll get loads of dahlia plants for the garden at the end of spring. Thank you for watching Pots and Trials. Remember, everything we've done over the last few years can be found on YouTube. Next week, we will be in the garden because I'm going to be showing you how to plant asparagus crowns. So we'll see you then. Bye.